Bible. You ain't got your Bible. Well, same, same, same. You're listening to that. Okay. And it, Luke 22, 35, And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, like you anything, and they said, Nothing. Who's Jesus talking to? He's talking to the disciples. They said, When I sent you to go tell Israel about uh, uh, the Messiah's here, did you need anything? They said, No, we didn't need nothing. Then he said unto them, But now, he that have a purse... Let him take it, and likewise the script, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. In other words, you need a sword. What's a sword? Protection. Back in those days, they had spears, bows, and swords. What's a sword for? You carry it on you. Why? Because if somebody else has a sword and you ain't got no sword, guess what? They can put the sword towards you and they go, give me all your money. So you needed protection. You know what Jesus said? Get you a sword. Get you some protection. You need protection in this world. You need protection from the other world. He said, what world? Uh, that would probably be Satan and his little... Uh, Devils. He said, sell one, buy one, for I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. He said unto them, it's enough. He came out, went as he went, uh, walked into the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. When he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. What are you supposed to pray? That you don't get into temptation. That's a good prayer. It still works. Pray that, you know, I don't do anything stupid, Lord, you know, while I'm over here, all right? I mean, I don't want to do anything dumb. You know, somebody offers me something, I want to be able to have the courage to say, no! No. Say no. And he was withdrawn from about a stone's cast. How far can you throw a stone? Pretty far. What well, how heavy is a stone? Two blocks. Two blocks, three blocks. <laughs> how far can you throw a stone? What you to say, Mexico for, huh? Two, three blocks? Mm -hmm. All right, so he was about two, three blocks away, and uh, he withdrew himself by the stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So the Lord is asking the Father, he knows he's fixing to die, be arrested. He knows they're coming for him. He tells the disciples, pray, that you don't get into temptation. And then he says, listen, I know there's going to be some things fixing to happen. And I really don't want to go on. Did you know that life, there's things that we just don't want to go through? Mm -hmm. There's some hard things that you're going to have to go through in life. And uh, if you go to the graveyard... Out there, there's a little bitty line between the dates. Born and death. That was their life. The little line. Everybody's going to have to sooner or later go there. Family, friends, neighbors. Sooner or later, you're going to go there. One day, we'll take you there. If the Lord don't come back. The little bitty line is the only thing that represents your life. In a couple of hundred years from now, they'll look at that grave and they'll say, I wonder who that person was. They done forgot about you. They done forgot about you. They don't even know who you are. You didn't like that at all. I can see that already. Okay. 
most people live their lives the way they want to live their lives, and nobody's going to tell them how to live their lives. It don't matter. I don't care if they're, it's a rich man, especially a rich man. Rich man, you ain't going to tell him how to live his life. Poor man, you ain't going to tell him how to live his life. The homeless man, you're not going to tell him how to live his life. He's going to live his life the way he wants to. No matter how much money you have, most people are going to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. Their teachers aren't going to be able to persuade them how to live their lives. Their parents aren't going to be able to tell them how to live their lives. Not even the boss is going to tell them how to live their lives. I mean, it's to the point now in our generation, uh, the generation that I live in, I have to actually, we have to cuddle uh, y'all's generation because y'all are such wimps that we have to baby you because you come in late and we know that in the old days everybody showed up early. But because you're such babies, we have to cuddle you. We have to treat you like children. We can't offend you. I mean, we can't say, that's the sorriest work I've ever seen in my life. Do it again. Stack them cans again. We can't say that. We have to say stuff like this. You know, that wasn't exactly the way I wanted it done. <laughs> Can you possibly redo it? Because, you know, that, that's just not, you know. we got to put up the way, you, the way you dress. I mean, tattoos all over the place. You know, you look like you fell in a tackle box. I mean, you've got stuff hanging all over the place. I, I, I mean, it's crazy. Just crazy. Don't go to the beach. I mean, you know, I mean, you know. And you ain't going to listen to nobody except for yourself. Maybe your friends if they agree with you. Now I agree with you. Oh, man, you're going to fight with them on Facebook. How dare you tell me how to live my life? This is my life. I'm going to live my way. I mean, the homeless guy, he ain't got no house. He ain't got no job. He begging for money. You know, we'll work for food. I pulled up to a family one time, and, and the family's out there, they're gypsies. And, uh, you know, it's the wife, the husband, it's, uh, it's the father, the mother, uh, the two children, have a teenage kid. And I said, hey, I'll give you a ride. I'll take you to work. You can come work for me. Oh, I don't have my papers. I cannot work. No problem. I'll pay you in cash. Oh, I cannot accept that. I am sorry. I need donation. He don't want to work. He don't want to work. He's got a wife and kids, and he makes his living by begging. Not for me. Ain't gonna work. Bible says you shouldn't eat. It's in the book. I done read it. He try to help him. He try to give him a better life. You know what? He prefer a handout. He prefer, prefer to eat a piece of cold pizza out of a garbage can. Been in there, got a little mold on it. You take the mold off, he eat the pizza. He's satisfied. But Jack always said the hardest person to uh, uh, win to Christ is somebody that's satisfied. If you're satisfied with your life, you ain't never going to cry out to God until the storm comes. And when the storm comes, and it always comes, well, there's always going to be a storm. You're either coming out of a storm or going into a storm. Real simple. When the storm comes, you call out to God, but you want God to help you in a certain way. You do not want God to help you the way God wants to help you. You sure don't want to go to church. You sure don't want to downsize. Oh, I don't know if I can afford. I mean, I've always had this type of phone, and this is a, you know, I mean, I, I gotta have this. I don't want the ninety-nine dollar phone, and I sure don't want the phone from, you know, uh, that's that's at the flea market or down at, at you know, 
uh, what's the place down there where, where they hawk everything? You know, I don't want one of those. Oh, I can't have that. No, I can't have a $15 pot. I gotta have the best, the best, the best, the best. $369. And I, I, I can't have, I just can't have tennis shoes. I just can't have shoes. Oh no, oh no. I gotta have a $100 pair of shoes. I gotta have $100. I don't have a hundred dollar pair of shoes. I can't, I can't, I forget it, forget it. Don't buy me nothing. I don't want nothing. If you can't come buy me no hundred dollar pair of shoes, I don't want nothing. Cause I'm a spoiled brat. That's the way you are with God. You don't want God's help. There might be uh, sickness. There might be death. But you want God to help you your way. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to blame God. For all the problems that all of a sudden start coming in your life, you know what you're going to say? It's God's fault. It's God's fault. It's God's fault. It always amazes me how everybody always blames God. I don't know why they died. I don't know why God did that. Uh, they were old. I don't know why they died. They weren't looking. I don't know why God did that. You know, they were sleeping on the railroad track. We had two kids run away from a boy's home. Their parents took them over there. Because you know what? They wouldn't listen to nobody. You know what they said? We ain't listen to y'all either. So they left. They decided, we're going to sleep on the railroad track. And when the choo-choo comes by, we'll hear the choo-choo. And guess what? We'll wake up and we'll go on our merry way and catch the train. Only well, problem was, the choo-choo came, the guy went, woo, 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 woo. You know what they